welcome to worship this morning. A uh, special word of thanks this morning to our musicians, uh, Steve Minkler, Allison Stiegel, and Amy Peterson, our technology team, uh, Patty Goke, Bruce Neubauer, uh, Tim and Brenda Wright, and Teresa Jones. I want to extend a special word of thanks to everyone who is volunteering and helped out with the uh, spaghetti benefit last night for uh, Chris Markfort and her family. So we're certainly appreciative of all that and for all of you who uh, participated in that and have also been contributing to uh, the cause through various donations as well as um, coupon books. So we appreciate that. Oh yes, there are some of our uh, faithful volunteers. Many people were out running and greeting people and, and doing counts and so we appreciate that. Um, also, a special word of thanks to um, Mel and Marianne Houck for our decorations here for Rogation Sunday. And you probably noticed the tractor out on the uh, sidewalk out there as well. Uh, Mel brought that in as well. So we're thankful to them for that. Um, and then uh, just a reminder, today is a communion Sunday. So if you have not received your communion packet, um, your little kit, let us know, we'll make sure that you get one. And if you are worshiping with us at home, we invite you to grab your elements. Um, maybe this might be a good time to do that. Um, we have Sign Up Genius on pause at the moment, um, but we do still ask you, if you're worshiping in person with us, to sign in, uh, just in case there's a need for contract, contact tracing. Um, so you want to make sure to keep people as safe as possible, and uh, if someone is exposed, we can uh, let you know um, to maybe go get checked and watch yourself. So, And then um, our next announcement is that we have um, collected many, many stuffed animals out there. Uh, some are new, some are gently used, and we certainly appreciate that. They are going in grief bags um, for uh, young children uh, that might just need a little extra comfort um, during a, a tough time. So uh, we're appreciative for, of the donations that have been made so far. Uh, Lori was in here earlier this morning and gathering up part of the zoo and moving them to another place. Um, but there are plenty hanging out there yet as well. So uh, they are still in need of that. They're in need of um, Kleenexes, bubbles, FLARP. Um, I think there might be a couple of other things. Um, you can go online and check out uh, the information on that. So, and then um, our next announcement has to do with the COVID-19 vaccination. As you see, many people are getting uh, vaccinated and more and more of, a of you are showing up here in person and we appreciate that. Um, but there are still people out there who have not gotten vaccinated and our church is hosting um, a vaccination clinic in two weeks. Uh, so it is next Sunday, for, or excuse me, in two weeks on a Sunday from nine to two. And then four weeks from then we can get the second shot. And so that will be that day as well. Uh, also a, a Sunday from nine to two on June 13th. So make sure to let your friends and family know if that's something that they would like to do. Um, there is no requirement that you're a member here. Um, so it's just open to anyone. So just, we wanna see people be as safe as possible. And then, um, I believe this is our final announcement, uh, graduation photos. Um, it is Recognition Sunday on the 23rd, and we will be sharing photos of anyone that's graduating. That might be uh, from high school, it might be a college degree, whatever that looks like. And then we would just like a, a bit of information on what um, those individuals are doing following graduation. So we invite you to uh, send that information in to Patty uh, here at the church office at patty uh, with an I at lwlcmn.org or if you forget what the email address is, uh, you can give her a call and she will make sure to let you know what that is. Any other announcements that uh, we need to be aware of right now? All right, with that, I invite uh, the baptismal family grouping to uh, head back to the baptismal font for uh, the baptism. There are several of them today, so... Yeah, we have a triple header. That doesn't happen often. This is awesome. So, and uh, everyone in the congregation, you can take out your little baptismal flyer. That would be good to have. And uh, follow along. Oops, 
There you go. Yeah, that's a good spot. Are we good? Very good. So today we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And in, in this water, we believe that God forgives us, saves us from sin and death, raises us to a new life. And God welcomes us into the family of God, makes us one in the body of Christ. God empowers us with the gift of God's spirit and that we are sent out then to be light of Christ for this world. So first of all, parents, you have presented Jada Marie and Jalea Ray Lynn and uh, Towner Upshur and Amir Jacoby Red for baptism. And today God makes some big promises to Jada, Jalea, and Amir. But you also are asked to make some big promises to God, to bring them to worship and help them learn the, the Lord's Prayer, the ten, the ten Commandments and the Creed, to read the Bible with them, provide them with opportunities to experience God's love and join them in God's work out in the world and to care for others in the world God loves and to join Christ's work for justice and peace. And so first of all, promise, uh, parents, do you promise to raise Jada, Jalea, and Amir as baptized children of God? Okay, and then for the sponsors, do you promise to nurture Jada, Jalea, and Amir in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Yes, we promise. And people of God, everyone here, do you promise to support Jada, Jalea, and Amir and their family as they grow in their faith? Yes, yes we, we promise. promise. Parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus to reject sin and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin and death that draw us all away from God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? Would everyone please join in? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you, we give our honor and praise. Amen. Well, I'm excited to have Will here, Grandpa Will right now, uh, being the assistant here who has, who has oftentimes helped with these baptisms as our assisting minister. So nice to have him in another role, but still in his old role too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Jada... You're going to, there you are, okay. You're going to begin. So you just kind of lean over here and Jada Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jada, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. There you go, you can wipe down there. Okay, Jalea, it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> Jalea Ray Lynn, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Jalea, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And there you go. You can <laughs> some dripping down that nose of yours there. Okay. And now we've got a mirror. Okay, buddy, you ready? Okay, Amir Jacoby, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. And a mere child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked at the cross of Christ forever. There you go. Now you can wait. Good job. Yeah. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Jada Marie, Jalea Lynn, and Amir Jacoby with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. So we light a candle, and Jada, you've been to enough children's sermons over the years. Why do we light a candle when we baptize people? Do you remember? It is kind of like a birthday candle. And, and so every May 2nd, you guys should light these candles. And remember that this is like a, a birthday that you have, another birthday where you're born into God's family. I mean, you've been a child of God, of course, always, but with baptism, God just seals the deal, and it is a, a claim and a promise made for us with us forever. And so um, I'm going to have Will offer uh, this blessing here. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your God in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of all life, Look with kindness upon Rochelle, Nicholas, and uh, Antoine, and let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us welcome Jada, Jalea, and Amir. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And all right, let's, let's give that applause to him. All right, so, well, great job. I wish we could have that little baptismal parade. We're still not to that point yet, but uh, we uh, celebrate with all of you and uh, welcome you. And you can return to your seats. And uh, for the congregation, let's, let's sing out our, our opening song.
Let us enter into a time of confession and forgiveness. God has extended mercy and grace to us that's beyond our understanding. As we consider God's immense love for us, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have failed to love you most of all. We have failed to fully be your church in this time and place. We have sinned against you and each other by things we have done and by things we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors because we have failed to see the Christ in others. Forgive us, we pray. For, free us to walk in the light of your grace and in full obedience to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Please spend some time in silent confession and reflection. Now hear this good news. Despite our brokenness, Christ died for us that we might have new life that proves God's gracious love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let me say that again. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. In baptism, we are made children of God, as we just saw moments ago. And so I invite you to make that same sign of the cross that I just placed on the, the foreheads of those kids. That is a reminder that we are forever children of God. A reading from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall, shall bow before the God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim, proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. A reading from 1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God, so that so we have known and believe that God that we and believe that the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in the love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, 
and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment that we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. So it's time for our children's message. And uh, just a reminder, we are all children of God. Um, it's kind of bright. So anyone know what this is? Yeah, OK, a lamp, right? So um, what happens if I unplug it? It goes out, right? And then if we plug it back in, it can come back on. So the gospel lesson we heard about today was about vine and branches. And this is kind of like that. And it's kind of like um, when we're plugged into God, we can shine a light. When we're branches and we're part of uh, the vine and connected to God, we can also share God's light with other people. I think this gives a good visualization of what can happen when we're not plugged in. Um, the light that we can try to shine for God can kind of burn out. It can be non-existent. So uh, I think this is just a good reminder of what can happen when we do participate and be a part of uh, who God wants us to be. All right. So we'll put this away here. I invite you to pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for inviting us into a, a relationship with you and to be a part of you, to be branches who are connected to you, who are the vine. We pray that you would help us to grow in you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. So this morning for a little bit, I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw a post from someone that I know. 
She shared that she had recently been to a store and was having trouble holding her mask in place with one hand while she was trying to shop with the other. She then went on to say that um, an employee had offered her another mask. Well, she went on to say that she had brain surgery and wasn't able to put the mask on because it had been by her ear and there was an incision there and it was gonna irritate that spot. So you might wonder what that has to do with being part of a vine or abiding with and in Christ, as our gospel message talks about. Well, how it relates is the next part of the story. So she got done shopping and she brought her um, items to the front register and the cashier checked her out and she was getting ready to go and she noticed that there were some flowers in her cart. And she said, I'm sorry, those, those flowers aren't mine. I didn't purchase any flowers. And the person said, they are for you. We put them there because we want you to get better. I don't know the faith of the person that shared the flowers, but I believe that they were and they are somehow connected to the vine that gives us life, to God who created all things. This gospel text is about connection. It's about where we can find strength even when we think we have none left, where we can find hope when sometimes all we can see is darkness, where we can find love when we're often exposed to so much that might seem like hatred. I've heard it said that we have a God-sized hole in us and that we often try to fill it with things that are not shaped like God, things that don't have the same characteristics as God. Sometimes they're things material possessions, all the toys, the cars, the boats, the motorcycles, the four-wheelers, the snowmobiles. You know, and it's not that we can't or shouldn't have those things. The problem comes when we put those things before God and before others, or when we turn them into gods themselves, when we love them more than we love God or people. Some people also try to fill that hole with drugs or alcohol or unhealthy relationships. Maybe it's excessive spending or gambling, or maybe it's unhealthily striving for power and position or other things that turn into compulsive behavior or addictions. These things, instead of enhancing our lives and relationships, and our longings for connection can often do just the opposite. They can lead us to a disconnect with our families, with our friends, with our coworkers, and with God. Over the past nine months or so, I've heard many people express a sadness and sense of disconnect over things that have been taking place on social media, in the news, and in our society. We're seeing he and hearing people made, make large, sweeping generalizations about political parties, about people of color, about various religions or denominations, about women, about those who are in need of government assistance, about the various things that we think we need to use to separate others from ourselves. In doing this, we are eliminating connection with others and connection with God. In Genesis, God created more than one person because it's not good for us to be alone. We are meant to be in connection. How many of you have ever cried or maybe teared up as you're watching a show or a movie? Why was that? I think it's because it's touched something inside of you, right? It reminded you of a connection to someone or to something. Or 
maybe it triggered a longing inside of you that you have for connection that you might not be re receiving, a connection that you wish for and hope for to others or to God. That deep thing that you feel in your chest and in your stomach. So how do we stay connected with God? There are several things that we can do. Several things that we can do to cultivate that relationship. First, we can pray. A story was recently shared with me by a father. He'd been talking with his daughter about prayer and said that she should, you know, it might be a good thing for her to connect with God. And she said, but daddy, I don't know what to say. He told her, that it's like having a conversation, that it is a conversation, and that she could say whatever she wanted. And as a reminder for us, prayer doesn't have to be done in a certain format or at a certain time of the day or with certain words, and we don't always have to talk about the good stuff, and we can even be angry with God God is the one that created us, every single part of us, including our emotions. So it makes sense that God knows and understands the things that we go through. Another way to stay connected and to cultivate that relationship we have is to read the Bible. We can learn about the God that loves us and wants what's best for us. We can learn about the characteristics of God, the God that guides us, the God that can get angry, the God that gives us opportunities to learn, the God that provides for us, the God that journeys with us, the God that loves us and forgives us over and over and over again. And we also learn about the people that God cared for thousands of years ago and even into today. It can give us a hope as we consider what has happened in the past and look at what's going on in our present. God is with us in the midst of our challenges we are also reminded of the interconnectedness that we all have in God's larger story. They were all connected to the vine. They were all branches. And another way to remain in connection with God, and one of the things that we were commanded to do, is to share that with others. That's done in various ways. Some of them are as simple as a smile, a kind word, the gesture of a gift. Maybe it's running an errand or doing some tasks. We can also make donations to various organizations that are helping people, like food shelves, homeless shelters, whatever those things are that touch your heart and pull on your heartstrings. Maybe you are sharing that message if you're a teacher or serving on a board or a committee. Maybe you're taking care of someone's roof or building a house for someone. Maybe you feel called to be a pastor or a deacon. What are the seeds that are being planted and watered and given sunshine so that they can grow in you? What kind of fruit will you be bearing? And what about can others? How do we stay connected to others? It's simple, but it's not easy. We share our stories. We learn about them, what God has been up to in their lives, and how God might be tugging on our heartstrings so that we might help someone else that we might help others to feel seen and heard and understood. Because when someone else's experiences don't match ours, 
it can be hard to understand. And we can be dismissive because we think sometimes it's easier to put someone in a box or to categorize them. I know there are some amazing stories in this congregation, and I look forward to hearing more of them as we journey together and grow in the sun, S-O-N. I've heard bits and pieces of stories from individuals around here, how they've met their spouse, things about their children and how proud they are of them, their grandchildren. I've heard about deaths and the pain that it causes and the losses. I've heard about feelings of disconnection, but I've also heard about hope for the future and opportunities to serve in new and different ways. What seeds are being planted for you as you carry out God's mission? Today we're doing a blessing of the seeds for Rogation Sunday, that time to celebrate the fact that God has given us soil and seed and water and sunshine. We are a society that relies on agriculture, even though there may not be many people that are directly involved in agriculture in hands-on ways right now. But many of you might be gardeners, and we all certainly benefit from the food that's grown and harvested, the meals that are put on our plates, and for that we're thankful. As I've already talked about a bit, we can water and plant in our relationships with God and with others and cultivate those relationships so that others can grow too. When we get to know other people's stories, a part of God's story, we dig and build deeper roots in our communities and we can share God's love in such greater ways with one another. We are not meant to be alone, but are meant to live and thrive as we become deeply rooted in God's word so that we can share the best of what God has to offer through each one of us and share that with others. Let's grow in the sun. Amen. We'll now join in singing our next hymn.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And boldly we bring our prayers to you because we know that you promise to hear us and to answer our prayers in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. And we ask that you perfect your love in us. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wander at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depend on earth for life. Put into our hearts the joy of being good stewards of your earth. We ask that you bless the farm workers who grow and harvest our food. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but for love for those they are called to serve. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak or fearful. And we pray for the needs of the sick and those recovering from surgery. Today, remember Al, Lorraine, Chris, Sherry, Diane, Tom, Joyce, Angie, Rick, Tana, Warren, Todd, Cindy, and Dick. We also pray for the people in India and Brazil who are being ravaged by COVID. We also pray for the family, students, and friends, and teachers of the first grader from Marshall who died from COVID. We give thanks for a new job and a safe move for Justin. And we also give thanks for the newest children of God and members of this faith community, Jada, Jalea, and Amir. And may we who took promises to them this morning in front of you that we remember our promise to help them grow in their faith. We pray for a reconciliation among grieving families through empathy, grace, and mercy. May we hear and act and abide as though we truly are motivated by your love. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting your never unending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace. For those who are watching online, as we prepare to uh, receive communion, we invite you to also uh, have some bread, wine, or grape juice available. <clears throat> For those who are gathered here, uh, you should have one of these little cups. Um, and we're going to eat and drink together, so don't do that yet. But uh, do have one of these if you need one. They're in a, in a container in the back. Well, as we are on this great vine uh, of God, uh, we are nourished in many ways, but this is one of the finest ways we are nourished, where we receive Jesus' very presence, his body and his blood. And so we remember in the nights in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
and he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. <coughs> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So go ahead and peel back that first little layer and take the piece of wafer and hold it. Hear these words spoken to you, the body of Christ given to you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The gifts of God for the people of God. And now receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you into eternal life. Be now at peace. Amen. God, you have given us these seeds. They have a past. They are the fruit of the past. They have a present. They are to be planted in your soil. They have a future. They are to bear fruit for the harvest. May the miracle of life within these seeds burst forth, yielding a bountiful harvest. Bless these seeds and those who plant them. God, you have given us this soil. The soil serves as the medium for seeds to grow. It cleans water, it regulates climate, it provides warmth, nourishment, and support so that new life may emerge. 
Bless this soil that it may feed and nourish the seed. Bless those who work the soil and harvest the produce. God, this water is your creation. Water gives sustenance and nourishment to the soil and the seed. Bless the soil and seed with gentle rain. Bless this water. Let it come as rain at the right time in the proper amount so that the seed may flourish and grow. In your mercy, send us favorable weather so that the harvest will be bountiful. You've all received a packet of seeds, and so um, we invite you to take this home with you and plant this. Uh, we're going to be doing some stuff throughout the summer, and on the back it says uh, we've got a Facebook group that we'll be have going for the summer, uh, LWLC Growing in the Sun. And so we'll be having, having some contests, maybe see who uh, is the shortest after planting <laughs> at a certain time, who's maybe who's is the tallest. Uh, who's got the <laughs> best colors. And uh, so anyway, we invite you to be a part of that. And um, we'll be checking in and, and uh, finding out what's going on. All right, let's sing together our sending song, God of the Harvest. And now as you go on your way, rooted and growing and bearing fruit, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.